a lot of times there are very simple things that we can do to accelerate our learning. Interleaved practice is one of those things. The idea behind interleaved practice is very simple. And to explain it, I, I wanna start with the kind of opposite kind of practice, which is blocked practice. Imagine you're learning some algebra techniques and you might be learning about linear equations and quadratic equations and inequalities. And uh, on your homework assignments, maybe the first day or first few days, you, you practice your linear, solving linear equations. And then, you know, the next week or something, you practice solving quadratic equations. And then the next week after that, you practice solving inequalities. So this uh, style of practice is called blocked practice. So you kind of, you know the kinds of problems that you're solving and you kind of do them in these big blocks. Now interleave practice would just be to randomize whatever kinds of problems you're working on um, uh, during, during your practice time. So you might be tackling an inequality problem and then you might be tackling a linear equation and then maybe a quadratic equation. You, you just don't know what's coming next. If blocked practice looks like a bunch of bricks, interleaved practice is kind of like, I don't know, like a bunch of rainbows or something. And so to understand why rainbows are better than bricks, we have to understand a little bit of uh, kind of the logic behind block practice and why that logic doesn't really hold up. The logic behind block practice is almost like you are collecting skills. So it's like, okay, I work on linear equations for a while. I'm gonna put that in my belt. I work on quadratic equation. Okay, I, I got that down. And I work on uh, inequalities. And now, you know, I've collected all these three skills, you know, da 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 da. I've leveled up in my RPG thing. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm kind of a better person, yay for me. But uh, that logic is not, it doesn't really represent how learning works. And the first problem with this logic is that it doesn't pay attention to long-term learning. Uh, what happens when you use block practice is that uh, you start to kind of forget how to solve certain problems. You, you're not, because you're not spacing out your learning sufficiently, what's happening is you never have to really think about how to solve a problem again and remember how to solve it. So uh, what interleaved, the first advantage that interleaved practice has over block practice is that it spaces out your learning on the same kind of technique or the same, the same topic. So uh, if you're working on linear equations under an interleaved system, you are say doing, uh, doing a, a linear equation here and then doing a linear equation a little bit later and then doing a linear, linear equation a little bit later. And each time that you do that, you have to think about, oh wait, okay, oh wait, what is this? This is a linear equation? Oh, okay. Now, okay, how do I solve that? Okay, now I, I, I kind of pull the information and pull the techniques um, out of my head to, to figure out how to, how to solve it. But the second advantage that interleave practice has is that uh, it helps you focus on fine details or on differences between the techniques that you're learning. So with block practice, you, uh, you never see say a linear equation and a quadratic equation and an inequality right next to each other. Um, but with interleave practice, these come in close proximity, which means that you can pay closer attention to kind of the differences between them. The broader, the broader point here is that interleaved practice uh, focuses on the right skill. So with block practice, you think the skills are linear equations, quadratic equations, and equalities, but that's not the skill. That's not the skill you care about. The, the skill that you care about is being able to solve any problem with the techniques that you have. And so you don't necessarily know what problem is going to come next kind of in the real world, even though I, I know we're talking about kind of algebra in this kind of abstract form, but you really want to be focused on how are you going to use this information in practice? Um, and you're not going to use it like in the blocked practice scenario. No one's going to tell you like, hey, I've got 
three linear equations coming down the pipeline. Like, here you go. Okay, time for a test. You are a baseball player, and you're, you are going to batting practice. Do you want to hit 20 fastballs, 20 curveballs, and then 20 sliders? Or do you want to have the pitcher just throw whatever it is they feel like at you? Yes, you want to have the pitcher throw whatever it is they feel like at you. E even though you're probably going to hit worse, the skill that you're actually practicing is much closer to the skill that you will actually be using in, in a real baseball game. Second question on this test, say you are learning bird species. Do you want to look at 10 photos of wrens and 10 photos of sparrows and 10 photos of some other generic bird species that I don't know? Or do you want to mix these uh, up? The answer, of course, is that you you want to kind of use interleaved practice here because you're interested in kind of parsing out the fine details of, of the differences between these birds, or at least how these birds look. To illustrate how effective interleaved practice can be, uh, there is a great little math study where the researchers took a group of students and they split them into two groups. And one group kind of did the problems as usual, as traditional, as kind of laid out in their textbook as the teachers usually gave them to students. The other students um, got uh, the same exact problems, but just in a different order. They all took the same test at the end. The group of students who used the traditional block practice got something like a 43% or something on this test. The group of students that used interleaved practice got something like a 72% or something on average on this test. Um, it just goes to show you kind of the power of interleaved practice when all you've done is just change the order in which you solve these problems. But before you go crazy using interleaved practice everywhere, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One thing is you don't want to start off using interleaved practice when you're just introducing new topics to students um, or you're just learning a new topic yourself. You, you want to kind of get familiar with that topic a little bit. So a little bit of blocked practice in the beginning is generally thought to be more effective. But relatively quickly, you want to be moving on to a more challenging kind of practice. And the other thing with interleaved practice that people tend to get confused about is that um, they think that mixing up problem types or mixing up bird species together here um, is effective then you should kind of take it to the next level and mix up activities all together. So I'm going to study Spanish for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna work on math homework for 10 minutes and then I'm going to do some programming for 10 minutes. This kind of approach, that's not interleaving, that's just task switching. Um, and task switching is actually very bad for learning um, because what happens is you have this mental cost every time you switch task and you're not able to really focus on what you're doing. No one gets better at say texting and driving when they text and drive. They get worse at driving and they get worse at texting. So interleave practice is not multitasking. Don't don't do multitasking, but you should think about how you can incorporate interleave practice into your study sessions or into your class. That's it. I've gone on too long again. If this was helpful or interesting or valuable to you in some way, please click the like button and good luck on all your, all your practicing.